noites. É, eu sou a diretora do Curta Carne e hoje a gente vai começar uma conversa com a Alice Braga. É, essa conversa vai acontecer em inglês porque faz parte da campanha é, para o Oscar. É, o Carne ele foi qualificado como curta é, documental e logo mais a Alice vai entrar aqui para conversar comigo. Eu gostaria de agradecer muito a SPCine que apoiou o filme nessa campanha e também é, o Carne foi contemplado no, no edital de curtas-metragens de 2016 e, e só com esse, com esse suporte da, da SPCine foi possível realizar o filme. Queria agradecer muito também a Laís Bodansky que possibilitou essa conversa hoje com a Alice. Estou muito feliz, é, a Alice é uma atriz que eu admiro muito. Eu vou, vou, vou convidar aqui ela para aqui. Olá! Oi, Alice! Tudo bem? <risos> Tudo bom, Camila? Tudo bem, Ai, que prazer. Ai, que honra prazer falar com você. Poxa, eu vi um filme tão lindo, seu trabalho, cara. Muito, muito potente. Que alegria estar aqui com você. Um prazer te conhecer. Ah, ah obrigada. Muito bem, legal. Será que a gente pode começar agora a falar um pouquinho, então, em inglês? Super! Eu vou falar, whoever is following me, hello everyone, olá a todos, quem estiver no Brasil, em São Paulo, assistindo, um beijo a todos, estou muito feliz de falar do filme, quem souber falar inglês, continua com a gente, I want to say hi to everyone, whoever follows me on Instagram, we're gonna do this live in English, this is uh, Camila Cater, Cater, right? Yeah, Catherine. Catherine. <laughs> She's a, a wonderful Brazilian director. She directed a short film that now it's on the, the, the list to, to be accounted for the Oscar for short documentary animation, uh, for short documentary. And, um, and I wanted to talk to her a little bit about her film that I, I'm going to put on my Instagram, whoever is following me on Instagram. I'm going to put a, a, the link for you guys to see on my stories as soon as we're done. So you guys can watch the film. It's on the New York op-ed. And it's a wonderful film uh, that she directed in 2016. You were saying you you said that you did the uh, you started writing 2016 or you yeah. did it in 2016. Yeah, the, the the inception of the film started in 2016, but afterwards uh, we started the production in 2018. 2018, and then yeah. you you released the film in Locarno Film Festival, right? Yeah, yeah, it's premiere in Locarno. Yeah. Premiere in Locarno, and then went to Toronto Film Festival and a bunch of other film festivals. Whoever is watching, um, you guys can see on your times. I'll put it, like I said, I'll put in my my stories. But it's a very powerful uh, film, and I really thought it was it was done in such a such a a powerful way with all the animation. You are an animator yourself, right? Yes, I animated the first segment. Oh, I was going to ask everything. you were the first segment, and then you have what I thought it was beautiful. It was you had like five different stories, five di different women, and five different uh, animators. How how did you come come up with with the the story for the film, and uh, and also like to to do this format, like having five different point of views? Yeah, uh, the 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 main idea to make Carney came when I was. Uh, uh, talking with my younger sister. Uh, she's very engaged in feminism. She's, she's six, younger, uh, six years younger than me. And we were re discussing things that usually are silent, like uh, our own bodies and issues in regard to, to that. And from, the, from this conversation came the, the association between the meat cooking points and the women's taste of life. And I remember also that in 2015, there was a, uh, a boom online. Women were sharing for the first time uh, personal stories uh, about their own bodies, about abuse, harassment, and things like that. And uh, I, I started to engage more in feminism, and I, I thought it was uh, an, a good idea to make a, a short documentary where women could uh, tell their own stories with their own voices, and we could animate Uh, uh, their stories without showing their bodies uh, in respect to them and also trying to protect their image. 
And it's beautiful because I think it, I think it was a beautiful choice. And also at the same time, I think the animation gives an idea of empowering the voice in that sense that everyone, what they're saying is that how much women are judged, right? Like how much we are judged or, or criticized about the way that we look, how we behave with our body, how we deal with our body and how for ages, right? And it's really interesting. And I love that you did with the animation because it's so powerful to hear their voice and their tone of voice and the, the, and you can feel how different they are from each other, but at the same time, how much they're talking about the same subject. And, and that, I think that's why when I saw the film, I was so uh, impacted by it because like you said, you have a younger sister, I have an older sister and, and Elena Inez, which is an actress that, that you spoke with. I'm a big, big fan of her work for many years. But it's interesting what she says, you know, about about the age and about the, the relationship with the body. I think all of us, in a way, we have uh, our own personal relationship with the body that at some point with a friend, with a sister, you already had these discussions. And I thought by you putting into the animation and with five different artists, it was beautiful because it's five different journeys that these artists interpreted. And I thought it was beautiful that it was like, you but you invited other people to to collaborate with you was it an idea in that sense to to create the, the different uh, uh connection with this story or, or or no what do you think yeah i think uh, uh, since the beginning uh, it was supposed to be made by five different animators and i, I would like to have some space to us to create uh, the visuals in our own styles because because usually in the animation industry, we don't have this freedom, we don't have even the, the role that men usually have. So uh, it was important to, to have all these artists, and I'm, I'm very proud of the work they, they've made on, on Carney. Uh, and we try to associate uh, each story to, to their speeches, uh, to the, the, the women's story speeches. For example, we have the second uh, uh, segment of the film, it's animated in, in watercolor animation, and uh, the the character uh, Larissa Hao, she's telling her, her true story about uh, puberty and menstruation when she uh, first got her menstruation, and we thought about uh, doing uh, an animation in uh, with a material that reminds blood, that also is uh, uh, somehow un uh, uncontrollable, and we tried to do this sensorial association. And it's beautiful what she says about the, the, the quote that she hears, right? Um, uh, about that the women, they, they have, they are different beings because they bleed but they don't die. And I thought it was so beautiful. And right after that one, you talk about menopause, there's a different woman talking about menopause. And, I, and it was interesting, uh, the order that you chose for the film, because I thought it was very, how much since we're, a young girl getting the period and a woman going through menopause, how much we're seen from outside and judged in a way from our entire life, like in a, in a very delicate, poetic way. I, I was really, I'm a fan I'm already. I'm sorry, because I really love the film. Oh, I was like, I need thank to you, Alice. Because just by seeing it as, as, um, as, a, as an audience, I was very touched by how much we go through that. We go through that in our entire life of that judgment. Whoever is joining our live right now, I'm talking to Camila Cat. This is a Brazilian director. Her, her film, we're talking about because her film is in a short content for the Oscar documentary short. And uh, we wanted to talk about her film. It's a wonderful film. I'm going to put in my stories, whoever's watching. I'm going to put in my stories after we finish the link. It's, uh, you can watch the film on the New York Times op-eds. So I'm talking to director Camila Carter. So, but what I was saying is about like this two, you know, this two, uh, this connection that you did in the film, like from the, the puberty, like from the, the young girl to the woman in menopause. And then you have Eleni Nez, which is a phenomenal Brazilian actress, a 79 year old. Now she must be a little bit older, right? Because you, you recorded with her probably two years ago. So she's probably yeah. like 81. <laughs> And how she speaks about the body and it's kind of like almost like a, 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 the way that you put it in the film in my opinion it was it was a, a very powerful um, way of connecting all these women through her voice through this point of view of life of someone who was part of a, a 
film industry in Brazil, and especially at that time that she was acting in those films, it was very much related to the body, to the sexuality. So how did you come up with Elena and how was that, that, that idea to, to call her and, and specifically being an actress that works with the body? Uh, the, the idea to interview Elena uh, came uh, from research and also a friend of mine, she uh, ref uh, referenced Elena uh, because we, uh, since the beginning, uh, I, I created some profiles for each cap chapter segment of the film. The film is uh, divided in those five women's stages of life. So it starts in the rare and goes to the well done. And uh, the, the profile I created for the well done was someone who was considered like a muse uh, or, or in music or in cinema, some, some art, some kind of art that usually, uh, I don't know, uh, where the body is very important to, to perform or to, uh, to work. And uh, we also want to discuss something that uh, the, the idea of muse, someone who's, who's usually uh, inspiration to a man and it's some kind of idea we wanted to discuss and I, I guess Elena was the perfect person um, she I'm, I'm, I'm a great admirer of her work I, I, uh, I remember uh, watching her films when I was uh, in in, uh, in the university and I, I remember that during this research process uh, I also watched Copacabana Mon Amour, which is the film that uh, we see, we can see in the film. We have a very small clip, but uh, it's her, her character Sonia Silky talking about uh, how she she uh, doesn't want to get old. Uh, she's dread of old age, and when I watch it, I was oh my god, we had to, we need this clip for the film. We can use uh, even uh, the film strip and animate. Uh, in, uh, over it, uh, so that's how uh, how we decided to interview her, and uh, I, I just love her speech. How it's very poetic, and uh, I don't know, yeah, I love it. <laughs> it was very poetic, and exactly like you said. I mean, like the way that you divided, it, it's so it's so powerful. And she she said something that I thought it was was beautiful. I mean, I tried to translate because I wrote it down because I heard it in Portuguese because she's a wonderful Brazilian actress for whoever is listening to her as a Leninist. Camila told a little bit of who she was, but she says, the body uh, apprehends the, how do I say materialidade, Camila? I don't know how to oh. translate the material, <laughs> the material part of us that we cannot run away, that, that we cannot, um, that he cannot run away from the suffering. And it's so interesting because by hearing these different perspectives of this, this, this girl, women, like this telling and sharing their stories, it goes so much to her latest speech, like her, the, 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 the conclusion that you make in the film. So I thought, I thought it was very powerful. So I, I love that you put, by the way, I love that you put that moment in the film with the animation because it's really, it really connects you. She's the only one that shows up. It's the actress. <laughs> She's the only one that you can see, actually. Her yeah, face, like yeah, you said, you yeah. like decided to right. show them, but she's yeah, yeah. She's Elena like, oh, is there. Really <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I but, forgot um, about it. Yeah, was, she's there. yeah, I mean, like, she's oh, there, sorry, it's yeah. interesting because she's there, but in a different time of her life, and probably she's yeah. a different woman by now, a completely yeah. different human being, right? Yeah. And she was yeah. Sonia Silky. <laughs> she was Sonia Silky as well. She was. Playing a character. <laughs> totally, yeah, she was totally right. the character, but what I mean, her, her face, like you said. Yeah, oh, she was of totally course, playing yeah. the character, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And also, I wanted to know, like, how was, how was, um, to interview these women? Like, how, how, one, first of all, I was curious to know, like, how did you choose each one of them? I mean, you told a little mm -hmm. bit about Lady Nez, but how, how was, you know, how did you get to them and how did you choose those stories specifically? Did you write a script before? Like, how did it come up? I was very curious about, about it. Yeah, I think that uh, creating those profiles really helped us to find those women. Uh, some of them we, we, we found from, uh, from the research process, but uh, I think most of them came from, uh, from friends that knew about the project and, uh, and they said, I, I know someone who 
would be perfect for Kani. She has a, a very nice story, a very strong one. And uh, the, the, also, uh, I, I wrote the script alongside Ana Julia Carvalheiro, and we, uh, she, she worked with me in this, this investigation uh, and, and research uh, also concerning the themes we want to approach for each, each one of the, the interviewees. And uh, the editing process was very difficult because we had like uh, six hours of uh, story. Material? Because, I was going to ask yeah. you because to cut into it, when I was hearing <laughs> it, I was like, she probably had so many hours of interviews. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, I work alongside Samuel Mariani, uh, who is the, uh, the editor, and Ana Julia Carvalero, and also Olivia Perez, who is the producer. And we, uh, we try to, to select which stories would fit better in the film, and it was a, ch a big challenge. Uh, because there are so many stories, that I think that there could be so many carnies, they would be very different from each other. And uh, I think it's also uh, important to say that uh, the animators, they have uh, access to all of those materials, the, the six hours, so they could develop uh, uh, a connection with the, the protagonists they would uh, represent and visually, and I think it was important. Yeah. What, did you film them? Just a curiosity, did you film them or you just recorded them, like the, the, the voice? No, it was only the audio. It was uh, uh, only three people uh, on set. Um, uh, and we tried to, to, to create a very comfortable environment for them. Uh, because they would tell so many uh, stories that are personal and, and, and intimate, and it was only women. Usually me, uh, Livia, the producer, and uh, Julia Perez, who recorded the audio and did the sound design. That's wonderful. All women. <laughs> yeah. It, we have like 95% uh, of women on the team. Nice. All the artists are <laughs> women as well? Yeah, the animation, animators are all women. The, the soundtrack is made by women, the sound, uh, producers, animators. <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> That's a good, good I mean, well, it's, it's, it is part of the soul of the film, so it's wonderful that you made that choice. I think it's important, definitely. And how, um, and so, so you, did, you did in 2018, you released in Locarno? And then you travel a little bit, like how was this process to getting, you know, to, to, to the Oscars and all that? Just a curiosity for whoever is watching and how they can find the film and just so you can tell a little bit about it. Yeah, Kanye is my first film as a director. So every, all those things are very new to me. And I, I, I'm, I'm very proud of, proud of my team. I couldn't imagine being in those places uh, and also how Kanye uh, the, the the career of the film was was really nice. We in English, like, just whoever is watching, it's called Flash. So it's Carney, but in English it's called Flash. I'll put both names on my stories for for you guys to see it. But go ahead, sorry. <laughs> no, no worries. And also, I, I think you can see the the film in uh, the bio here in SCC. Oh, if you right. want to, yeah. Yeah, whoever whoever's showing also the the bio is in SCC. Perfect. Uh, so the film premiered in uh, August 2019 in Locarno and it was like a dream for me because it was the first time I saw it on the big screen and uh, with the audience and I, I was crying. <laughs> it was amazing. People were reacting a lot during the screening so it was uh, a very special moment. And afterwards uh, uh, I had the... Uh, uh, I think I was lucky because, because I could have... Uh, some support from Ancini uh, and from Itamaraty to, went, to go to some festivals like uh, Toronto, Seninci uh, uh, in Spain. Uh, I think I, I was traveling for about five months, uh, going from one festival to another. It was uh, uh, like an, uh, a big adventure. <laughs> it was amazing. But afterwards uh, came the, the pandemic, and I was in, in Vienna, and I had to come back here. Uh, and now the festivals are online. We are still, like, for example, it was in Annecy. It was online. It's good that people can access the film um, from around the world, but it, 
it's not the same experience I, I, I experience I think yeah. <laughs> I miss yeah, the audience. Yeah, it's interesting what you said about Yeah, and it's interesting what you said about what happened in Locarno, that you, of course it was a lot of emotion for you as being your first film. But I think the film has uh, such a powerful and I think common connection. It's not, a call, it's not just a Brazilian thing, do you know what I mean? It's different than when you're telling a story specifically about one, you know, one group of people or one specific culture. I think the, your movie has the power to cross borders in that sense that it's a common feeling that many women feel all over the world. And I think what, what you did was so powerful because of that. And also I love the idea of the, the animation, like I said, because it really connect, I think it opened doors for other cultures and other people. They're not from Brazil, but they can connect with it in an interesting way, I think, in a, in a more ludic way. I don't know if it's logic or it's ludic. Now I'm like <laughs> creating my own English. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I agree with you. I, I, I think women can connect with the film and audience from all around the world. And, and, and it's some kind of uh, it's a universal team. And unfortunately, this association between the women's states of life and the meat cooking points, they, they work everywhere. It's, it's sad, but we need to discuss it and to change yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And it's an important film for men to watch it as well. And I yes. think that I really love when, you, when, I, when I saw it that you traveled a lot with the film. I'm really excited that it's, you know, in the content for the Oscar documentary short, like short documentary, because it's, uh, it's such a powerful and necessary discussion, and not for women to have, and not for women to acknowledge, but for men. So I think you crossing that, like being able to, to show the film, again, whoever is watching or just joined, Camila, Kada is a Brazilian director, she has her film. You guys can watch it, I'll put it on my stories. Um, you can watch it on New York Times op -ed. It's a wonderful film. But I think it's very important to send the message, to raise the question, to bring the subject. Also, apart from being, you know, a very, powerful, beautiful, beautifully done film, meaning the texture of it and the art. I mean, you're an artist, but <laughs> the art that you guys created, I think for the subject of it, it's very, very powerful. Does anyone have a question for us? Let me see, there's a lot of questions from Queen of the South. I know, guys, I'm filming. <laughs> <laughs> I promise my, my, my show is gonna come out. I do a show here, Camila, that in, in New Orleans, and we're filming season five. And a lot of people yeah, are I know. To go online, they're like, where is it? <laughs> yeah, it's amazing, I know. <laughs> so if you feel anyone has a question, send us, otherwise I'm gonna ask another question before we go. Everyone say hi, hi, you guys should watch the film. It's a beautiful film. Let me see if I have questions. I wrote it down a few, a few stuff, but um, you kind of like reach it out. Is there anything that you would like to put it out for people to know? I think that's really important, I, like for your message that you want to. I think there's something you asked me and I, I forgot to tell uh, about the Oscar, uh, how, how it came up, uh, the, the, the qualification. Uh, uh, Kani won an award in Zinebi Film Festival, International Film Festival in, uh, in Spain. And uh, that's how we are uh, qualified for the, the documentary short subject. Good. Mm -hmm. And that shows how much someone asked here, and thank you for the question, how important it is for the government to support our films and how important was SCPC and NC to be involved. I think it would be great to for us to take this, you know, little window for us to talk about. I think it's important to say how much was important for your film, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, Kanye was uh, only possible because we had this public uh, sponsor from, from Espessini and uh, it was a very uh, amazing support and now they are doing it again. We are here in, <laughs> in their space and I'm, I'm very grateful to Lais Bodansky <laughs> and to you, Alice. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. My pleasure. <laughs> Lais Bodansky is an amazing Brazilian director and she's also the director for Cipacini, which is this institution in, in Sao Paulo, my hometown, Brazil. And uh, she's a phenomenal director. If, if you guys are watching, don't know her work, please look for it. Right, Camila? She's a brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I want to work with I her. I love her film.
Lighting the fireworks. <laughs> People want to ask you for, for a part in your next film. <laughs> and you as well. Actors do that. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, I would love to. <laughs> but, um, um, but yeah, but I, I, I love that you said that because someone asked that question and I think it's very important to say how much, and you mentioned and see me, how, how much was important also the support for you to be able to travel to the festivals and to talk about it and to do Q&A. <clears throat> And I think it's really important for for our art. So it was great too. Someone asked here, how long did it take total to make the film? Like from idea to the process of making it to the final, you know, product to going to Locarno. Yeah. If you consider uh, the the inception, I guess it was uh, uh, five years because we started in 2015 just uh, with this idea. But uh, the the production itself be, began in in 2018, and we finished the film in 2019. So um, it was one year and a half in production, and five years from the inception. And for animating, uh, it was pretty pretty quick for animation. We did in we made in uh, four months. Pretty That's quick, fast, like, right? <laughs> it, it it's won't. really fast for animation, right? Or no? Yeah. I, I, because I don't no, know yeah. much about it. It is really fast, right? It, it is, because uh, it's 12 minutes, and we did, uh, at the same time, each animator animating in their own houses, because we don't have a studio. Uh, and uh, we were uh, sharing everything we did and motivating ourselves in the process. It was, it was really beautiful. Uh, but yeah, that's how we made it. <laughs> That's beautiful. So it was five years, and, and then you, you you applied for the I don't know how to say editize in English. Yeah, me, me too. I don't know. Yeah, for for the government um, support. So that was the process first, and then you started. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. That's and, not. And for... Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, no. no, unfortunately, when I was in Toronto, uh, I was there uh, because Ancini supported my my travel. But uh, when I was there, it was the second festival and I received an email saying that no there is no uh, more support because of the, the new government when Bolsonaro was elected so uh, it, it was such a pity yeah, yeah yeah and also during the production uh, there was a, a change in the visuals because I I, uh, I I wanted to make the film from the beginning in 2D digital only one technique but after interviewing the first protagonist, Hakel Patricio, I, I changed my mind and I decided uh, it would be best to uh, represent her, her story, uh, which was uh, something that happened with her when she was a child. She, she was fat and her mother was a nutritionist. Mm -hmm. And I decided to, to represent her story in a, in a dinner plate using real food and, and that's how it changed. And also the budget changed because we everything was uh, going to be more expensive with the techniques and from that point uh, we didn't have m many resources left here in Brazil so we decided to uh, to um, make a co-production abroad uh, with Telo Loreiro who is a Spanish producer and then we, we were like it was like a, an alliance uh, with women and it went pretty well that's but it, it's a pity, yes, yeah, how, how we, we don't have many resources now. Yeah, and those co-productions, and especially like, like we were talking about Essipessini, uh, how institutions like this are so important nowadays for us also, like for that, like to, to not only support the making of the film, but support connections with co-productions and possibilities, maybe like Spain or France or something, so we can still, you know, keep keep doing our films and making it happen. Talking about it, what are your plans? Like, what are you working on? What are you doing? Like, how... Uh, have you been creating uh, during this insanity, pand insane pandemic? Yeah, yeah, it's been very difficult, but uh, uh, we are developing a current series. Uh, nice. It, it, yeah, it will be it be it will be something with more characters and uh, characters from around the world. Uh, maybe you can be a character, Alice, <laughs> oh, <laughs> if you want. <laughs> Yeah, and the, uh, for, uh, the plan is to interview women from uh, Brazil, uh, Palestine, China, Spain, and Nigeria. 
That's how amazing, clear beautiful. Is. An African country yeah. is very important to, to yes. That's beautiful. That's wonderful. You've been writing during the pandemic. Yes, I've been writing the, the profiles and uh, doing a lot of research about uh, the topics we are going to approach. Beautiful. Thing, thing nice. That's great. Hi, Camille. It's wonderful to talk to you. Thank you so much for the time. Hi. And, and it it's funny amazing. that we met each other talking in English. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so true. Well, I hope we can meet again. Red and red like me. I wore red. Yeah. Red. I was like, I'm oh, red thank red. you so much. Of You're course. in the color palette. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, there's no other color that I need to do. It needs to be cotton. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Thank you for all your support, uh, Lisi. Of course. Yes, it's I a hope, pleasure. I hope we can, can meet in person someday. Day, yes. And also yes. speaking <laughs> Portuguese. <laughs> exactly. Let me speak Portuguese. You're from some, where are you? From Sao Paulo, right? São Paulo. Yeah. Good. I'm very Paulistana, so we, we should be in São Paulo. <laughs> yeah, and again, for okay. everybody that is watching, Camila, I'm going to put her, her link right now on stories for you guys to watch, but go look for the film. It's, the name is Carne. Translation is Flesh. I prefer saying Carne because it's more powerful, more beautiful. It's our language. It's Portuguese <laughs> and Spanish too. But um, it's a beautiful film. Check it out. And, um, and yeah. Let's, let's, now, now it's rock and roll time. Let's all, you know, look for it and, and, and hope, you know, it, it keeps on going on the Oscars. Oh, thank you, Alice. Thank, thank you, you everyone so who was watching. Thank, thank you very you, much for watching, guys. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Alice. Um Bye-bye. Um Bye. Thank you, Alice. Ciao. Ciao, Alice. Deixa eu ver se eu consigo aqui.